Hello and welcome back with yours in D Magnus Hellfire. Now today is the third episode of my equipment update vlog. Uh, now it has been a while since I've done videos. Uh, I obviously have done one just before the, it's the um, oh I've already forgotten it, I've just finished editing it. It's the uh, oh, Mediva TS um, dev vlog, the third one. That will just go up on Wednesday, this will be going up today, Friday. Um, it has been a while since I've done some videos I'd just like to point out. I had to take some weeks off because I had other stuff going on and things like that. But I'm getting back into it now. Um, so anyway, so like I said, this is the third episode of my equipment update. Um, and this time, instead of being doing a piece of hardware like my first two were, like the first one was a CPU cooler and case fan, second one was a um, new keyboard. And um, this one's going to be based on a piece of software that I've actually been using for a few weeks now. And um, I've mentioned it several times in live streams because it, it's actually allowed me to um, live stream old games and even just play old games as part of it. So the new piece of software I'm using is called VirtualBox. And basically it allows me to run virtual machines on my computer. Now, uh, what are virtual machines? It's basically a PC inside of a PC, it's an emulation of a PC. Now, um, you, for those of you wondering what this it can be used for, it has tons of different uses. For example, the two uses that I'm using for at the moment is I run Windows 7, but using virtual machines I can run Ubuntu, Linux Ubuntu, which I use for my coursework at uni because uh, for our OS module we have to learn some of the things of how to use Linux plus Linux does have other advantages as well and I also use it to run, run Windows XP which allows me to run old games it's also how I've been live streaming things like Blood and Magic uh, if you've not seen then uh, you can go check it out I'm currently rendering out the third one that one was a mess I spent 40 minutes for some reason the software was having some bugs I'm not entirely sure why it was partly me being an idiot, it turns out, but also partly the software being a bit buggy, which I admit was the first time I've had that, but hey-ho, it's probably something I've fiddled with in the settings. So, like I said, the software I have been using is VirtualBox. Um, it allows me to have unlimited um, virtual machines, although you are limited as to how many you can run at once, um, mainly by your PC. Um, I've not tried running multiple, but I've seen other people run multiple at once. Um, so how does uh, a virtual machine work? Well, to run a virtual machine, you do need to have um, certain pieces of hardware. Um, now, more and more hardware nowadays have what it takes to run a virtual machine. If you've got an old computer, you probably won't be able to. Um, you, for example, for an Intel setup, I don't know what it is for AMD, but for an uh, Intel processor, it needs to have um, something called VTX um, to allow virtualization. Um, I think there's also called something called VTM or something like that to help boost it. I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but that also helps. Um, it, of which my processor has both, and the i7-4790K. But more and more processors nowadays uh, support virtualization along with various other features. Now, that's not a reason why I originally bought this processor. It just happens to be a nice little side effect, but there we go. Um, also, to have other features um, to enable different things in virtualization, you need different things from your motherboards as well. Um, however, I think to run basic virtual machines, most motherboards can do it, but... Don't quote me on it, it's always, if you want to run virtual machines, always check your uh, CPU, um, your motherboard, all that supports it. And then there's also if uh, your system's capable of running it. Now, 
one of the advantages of virtual box i don't know if others do this but virtual box has an advantage where you can set the number of cores that you want your emulated machines to run you can set the exit the clock speed that you want it to use you can also set the ram you can set how much video power it uses and things like that um, so my machines both uh, Ubuntu and XP run the same they're currently running as a dual core clock to 4 gigahertz I didn't see the point in limiting the clock speed but you don't want to get it to use your full processor because otherwise you've got nothing left to run your host machine you should always give it less than what your host machine has because otherwise you go run into other problems um, it, they also both run 2 gigs of RAM unfortunately as I only have 8 gigs at the moment I don't want to dedicate a load and at the end of the day I think XP itself could only take up to 4 gigabytes and it's only running old games anyway it's not doing anything intensive um, the downside is they're both having to run off integrated graphics at the moment now there are things you can do to get it to run uh, patch through to a video card, a graphics card However, if you do that, it means your host machine can no longer use your graphics card. So only one machine at a time can use it, whether it's your host machine or your virtual, only one of them can use your graphics card. So that's why neither of them off my graphics card. In time, I may get a secondary graphics card that I may dedicate to it, but I'm not sure because chances are I'm not likely to do anything on the, that requires it. I mean, at the end of the day, Ubuntu, like I said, I'm mostly using for coursework, um, which I don't need graphical power for. And the XP and the XP machines running games from like mid 1990s, early 2000s at the earliest. So, quite frankly, 128 um, megabytes of video memory back then was probably more than what was in some people's heads um, as a dream um, for some of these games. But yes. Um, like I said, I've been using this software for a couple of weeks, it does have various advantages. There are other things you can use it for as well, um, such as one of the things that I'm going to look into seeing if I can do for with it in future, is I'm going to see if I can get more copies of different versions of Windows and Linux, so like Windows 7, Windows 8.1, Windows 10, and I can use it to test uh, things like games, see how well it works on different operating systems, but then I can also use the fact that I can limit things like clock speed, the number of cores, things like that, to test how well it works on different pieces of hardware. Now, obviously that's not a true test. It won't work as well as if you've got an actual, say, uh, dual-core G3 2050, uh, an Intel dual-core clock to 3.2 gigahertz, roughly, I think. Um, now, if I want to emulate that, I can set it to run um, as a dual core 3.2 gigahertz. Now it's not a true emulation because it would still be able to use the extra cache and so on that my processor has. However it would give you a rough idea of how well it would work on that processor for example. That's just one of the uses you can have for it. There are many other uses you can use VMs for um, such as if you've got a beefy enough computer to, um, if you've got say a Xeon processor with like um, I don't know 16 cores, I don't know the Xeon lineup very well, um, you could actually have um, say eight different VMs of Windows 10, each running as a dual core, and let eight different users use it as eight different computers when it's actually in one computer. Uh, there's one advantage of it. I know servers use it. There's loads of different things that you can use these VMs for. Now, like I said, I don't use it for anywhere near as much as that at the moment. My main uses are coursework and then playing old games and streaming old games. Um, like I said, I am going to be using it for more in future. I'll be using it to be able to test games, see how well they work in different platforms and things like that. Um, but that, before I can do that, I've got to get different versions of Windows and so on. And at the moment, I haven't got the biggest need of it until I've actually got some games that are finished in development to be able to run and test on them. So, like I said, this piece of software is great, and if you want to get it, I would honestly say it is brilliant. And it's honestly brilliant if you want to play old games, it's brilliant if you want to, say, run Linux 
which as well as Windows. You can dual boot those two instead, but it depending on how much fat about you want to do, I would argue that this is actually a little bit easier. The downside to this over dual booting is this is more intensive than dual booting because it means your computer's having to run two OSs at once. If both OSs are having to run to heavy high intensive programs, it's going to be a lot more strain on your machine. Now, uh, like I said, if you want to get this software, I will have a link in the description for you to be able to download it. Um, like I said, if you want to get it though, uh, there's just a few things that I would do first before you actually look at it, get it. First, things like your CPU, make sure that supports virtualization, uh, your motherboard, things like that. Things like your CPU, if you've got like an Intel processor, if you just it's got the Intel Arc, that normally tells you if it's got virtualization or there's benchmark websites. Normally it's fairly easy to tell. Even AMD processors, while they're not as easy to find as Intel because it, I don't know if they've got an equivalent to Intel Arc or something like that, but it's still generally just a quick Google search. Just search up your processor, see if it's got virtualization. If it does, great. If it doesn't, then unfortunately you're not going to be able to run a virtual machine. Um, then after you check the hardware has support for it, um, then you also want to check is it actually capable. I mean, if your machine only has say uh, four gigs of RAM, I really wouldn't want to try and run a virtual machine just because you don't have enough RAM. Also, if you've only got like a dual core processor, even if it supports virtualization, it's not really got enough power you possibly could but I wouldn't really want to try it um, the lowest specs I would really want to try personally on something like that is like an i5 um, with like 8 gigs of RAM or something like that and a pretty decent motherboard pairing it all now I'm running an i7 with 8 gigs of RAM and I've left my phone on like an idiot damn me um, that works absolutely fine the i7 works beautifully I really wish I'd put that on silent. The i7 works beautifully because it means I've still got plenty of cores to designate. I've got plenty of threads because it does work with hyper-threading too, I would like to point out. I would like to have more RAM. Um, 8 gigs is more than enough. It's just well, when you want to be able to run virtual machines and render and so on, you kind of would like more RAM to uh, give yourself more space. So ideally, I've won 16 but I've won 16 anyway for various other reasons which I'll look at getting later on. So yeah, once you've checked that your hardware supports it and once you're fairly certain that your uh, hardware is actually physically capable of it, then um, I would download it. It is a free software, as you've mentioned that at the beginning. Um, it's completely free. There are other ones that you can get there paid for, but there's not much point when personally I found virtual bot does everything that you really need it to do unless you're looking for some strange um, special feature that you want um, and once you've downloaded your software got it all installed that's when you get your installation disk for Windows 7 or anything like that or USB and then you just um, set up your VM um, to start off with you set it up by saying how hard disk space you want um, things like that. It's a simple setup wizard. It walks you through most of it. Then once it's created, you go into your settings. You just say how many cores you want to use, how much RAM, video memory, things like that. And once your VM's set up, you then put in your disk or memory stick or whatever uh, bit of storage you've got to install your OS. And you start up your VM and from there it's just a normal installation as if you're installing Windows on an actual PC. It's actually pretty easy, pretty simple, and it's not too complicated. A lot of it is fairly intuitive. So once you've got it all set up, you can just start, stop, run it, works beautifully. Um, I, like I said, I really couldn't complain with this bit of software. It's helped me out a lot. It's meant I haven't had to go get emulators for games. It's meant I haven't had to faff around trying to dual boot Linux, because have tried that on this computer before for some reason I couldn't get it to work probably more because I'm an idiot than it wouldn't work but either way this was easier and simpler so this while you do need to have a copy of whatever OS 
you want to run for Linux, that's fine, you can just download it for free. If you want something like Windows XP, you've got to go out and find a version of Windows XP that you can use to install on VirtualBox. But once it's set up, it just runs beautifully and it runs as a normal OS and it's easy enough to work, run from there. So, like I said, if you want to use virtual machines, I would highly recommend this bit of software. It is free. I know there are other ones out there. And yeah, um, there was a Microsoft one that I think, I think, I can't remember what it was called. There was something like Virtual PC instead of Virtual Box or PC Virtualization or something like that. Um, I could have got that free as student, but I'd already downloaded Virtual uh, Box. And to be honest, Virtual Box does everything you want anyway. Now, that's everything for this episode. Um, like I said, that's the um, Virtual Box software that I've been using. This has been part three of my equipment updates vlog. And um, what will be next, I don't know. I am planning on getting an SSD and new hard drive soon for my computer, but also I need new RAM. And there's various bits of equipment that I would like to get. It's just to get money. But I will continue to put out these updates whenever I get new software, new hardware or anything like that and like I said I will say what I think that these videos are sort of reviews and they're just sort of like here you go this is what I've got see if you like it or not anyway thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time Hellfire out